Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing end them, to die, to sleep no more. My freshman year of high school, I was introverted. I didn't like talking to people, and I had a real fear of standing up in front of people and talking. So I figured I would kind of coast under the radar, and I joined the theater department and stood on stage in front of a thousand high school students while they judged me. <laughs> they are far less kind than my Toastmaster friends, I will tell you that. But by going through that crucible of high school theater, I learned a lot of bad traits, and I learned a lot of good traits. And these are things that I carry along with me as I give speeches to Toastmasters and in other environments. So I wanted to teach you some of the tricks that I've learned through acting that I put into place every time I give a speech. Hopefully this will be something that's helpful. So I'm going to give you three tips today that I learned through acting that I put into place for every single one of my speech. Tip number one. This is the easiest one. What do I do with my hands? Does anyone have awkward feelings on what to do with their hands? My freshman drama teacher, Mrs. Bumgartner, not even kidding. When I first got on stage, she said, Robert, keep your hands above your waist. I can do that. That's it. That's the whole tip. Keep your hands above your waist. If you're having trouble figuring out what to do with your hands during a speech, keep them above your waist. Unless you're doing that awkward doctor thing where you just washed your hands and you're walking into the operating room. If you keep your hands above your waist, you're not just going to hold them out in front of you. You're going to use them. You're going to be expressive. This is a really easy tip for people that are speaking in public to feel more natural. Keep your hands above your waist. Tip number one. What is it? Keep your hands above your waist. Very good. You guys are doing better. Tip number two. It's all about the pose. Posture. What we want for tip number two is an open posture as public speakers. As communicators, we want to be open. So what is an open posture? This is a great example of an open posture. Straight back, shoulders back, arms out, feet apart. I like to keep mine about shoulder length apart. An open posture communicates strength, communicates a depth of knowledge as a speaker. It communicates a confidence. If you want your message to come across to your audience, an open posture automatically makes the environment conducive to getting your message across. So what would the opposite of an open posture be? Closed posture, very good. Closed posture looks like this. Cross, closed, tight, crossed arms, hands in your pockets. We see a lot of speakers do this. Women are bad about doing this. They'll come up and they'll cross their legs. This is a very common thing that I see a lot of female speakers do. And you can have a very common, you know, confident pose, but you're still closing yourself off. Close posture is great if you're playing a meek character on stage, but if you're communicating a message that you want to come across to your audience, we want an open stance, an open posture. So, trick number one, hands above your waist. Above your waist. Tip number two, we want an open posture. posture. Very good. <laughs> Tip number three, this one's a little bit harder. In acting, we want to move with purpose. You always have a reason to move in real life. I'm going to get a beer from the fridge. Oh, there's Carol. I'm going to go say hey to Carol over here. Right? We move for a reason. If I'm talking to you in a conversation and I just start wandering around while we're talking, you're going to think I'm nuts. You are. It's, it's crazy. We want a reason to move. You see this a lot in theater where somebody walks off stage during a scene, they might walk back on. Well, later on in that scene, they need to be on the other side of the stage. Well, if they just walked from one side of the stage to the other for no reason, it's, it's awkward. You notice that as an audience. When people move for no reason, it, it draws you in. It, it captures your attention. So we'll find little tricks in theater to get that person from point A to point B. You'll see a, an extra you know, huh, pick something up and walk over here and show it to somebody for no reason. It's not in the script. There's no reason to do that other than to get that person from point A 
to point B. We move with a purpose. This is something very useful in that. Uh, I'm sorry, this is something very useful in public speaking as well. As a public speaker, we want to move with a purpose. We want to have a reason for a move. If we want to use the space around us and move around, we don't want that to be a distracting gesture. So how can we use this? Well, it gives us some great opportunities. One, we can script when we want to move. So I can talk about walking over here to see somebody. I can talk about going over here. The other thing it does is it allows us to break our stage up into different areas that we can use. So over here, I'm talking about tip number one. Over here, I'm talking about tip number two. Over here, I'm talking about tip number three. If I want to talk about tip number one, remember earlier in this speech when we were talking about keeping our hands above our waist? You see what I've done? I've just pointed to something that doesn't exist. I've created a visual that's not really there, but in your mind as the audience, I've partitioned the stage into different areas of my speech. That's an extra benefit of movement with a purpose. If I want to transition to a different topic, I can walk to a different part of the stage. The nice thing about this too is if I don't have a reason to move, what do I do as a public speaker? I stand. When you learn that your speeches should be moving with purpose and you don't have a reason to move, it takes away the tendency to want to pace back and forth. So those are three tips that we've learned in theater that I put in every single one of my speeches. This is one of the reasons why I've been able to come up here, and I'm only on speech four, and, and do what I do, and people say, oh, Rob, you're so great. No, it's because I, I'm cheating, basically, that's, that's it. So now you have my, my power. So we learned <laughs> tip number one is to keep your hands above your, waist. your waist. Tip number two is have an open posture. posture. And tip number three is to move with perfect purpose. Now you have all of my secrets. <laughs> so fellow Toastmasters, my question is, to be or not to be. Thank you very much.